Well, new at 10, the town of Oakboro has suspended police chief T.J. Smith after he told officers about a vaccine clinic where they could get a vaccine card without actually getting fully vaccinated. A Fox 46, the Northeast Bureau Chief Sydney Heiberger is live tonight in Oakboro. Sydney, how is the community reacting? Alicia, yeah, following that investigation, Oakboro, the town uh, administration placed Chief Smith on uh, unpaid suspension for two weeks. He'll be on probation for six months. But despite that disciplinary action taken against him, a lot of the people I spoke to in town today say they support the chief. In a small town with a population of around 2,000, everyone knows everyone including the police chief. She brings food to my mom. She's elderly. Chief TJ Smith was suspended without pay on Monday following an internal investigation that revealed he, quote, notified officers about a clinic where they would be able to obtain proof of COVID-19 vaccination without being vaccinated. Everybody makes mistakes in their line of work. Um, I just don't think it's right or fair for him to be suspended. The town says Chief Smith's actions violates personnel policies regarding fraud, endangering others, and serving a conflicting interest. But people in town say that's not the chief they know. Anybody could make a mistake, and maybe the only thing you had to do was just talk to him because the community love him. I know I do. The FBI has been warning the nation about the dangers of fake COVID vaccine cards for months. They say anyone caught selling or buying fake cards could face a fine and jail time. Misrepresenting yourself as being vaccinated and entering a gym, a house of worship, a, a school, a place of education is not only putting you in, at risk, but it's putting others at risk. Yeah, I did reach out to the chief for a comment about his suspension. He did not uh, respond to our request, but he does have the option to file an appeal for those disciplinary actions. I'm live in Oakboro, Sydney Heiberger, Fox 46. New at 10 tonight, we are hearing from the White House after the FDA has authorized the first pill to fight COVID-19. The drug from Pfizer can be taken at home. Studies have shown it can cut hospitalizations and deaths by 90% among patients most likely to get seriously sick. Initial supplies of the drug are expected to be limited, but today White House COVID-19 response coordinator Jeffrey Zion said they're working to get more out. Now that the pill is authorized, we'll have discussions to explore how we can help them improve their manufacturing capacity. Right now, officials say fewer than 300,000 courses of the new treatment will be available through the end of January. Well, new tonight, the Supreme Court will hold a special session on January the 7th over cases challenging President Joe Biden's vaccine requirements for large employers and certain health care workers. Now this, after some justices were asked to intervene in lower court disputes over the mandates. Now, for now, though, the rules remain in place and are set to go into effect on January the 10th. All right, tracking the spread of COVID-19 tonight, the daily percent positive rate in North Carolina reached 10.3 percent. That's the highest that it's been since late September and December. Excuse me, Department of Health officials are reporting 2,800 new cases and 16 more deaths. And that's the highest count since October in Mecklenburg County. The percent positive rate is now at 8.8 percent. And in South Carolina, officials there report 781 new cases today, 15 new deaths, and a daily positive rate of 9.2 percent. Now, right now, the focus is on Washington getting those at-home test kits promised by President Joe Biden yesterday out to every American who wants one. And our Rich Edson is at the nation's capital tonight with more on the federal government's plan to combat the new Omicron COVID variant. A day after President Biden unveiled his latest COVID-19 strategy, health experts weigh in on the administration's new approach and its focus on more vaccinations and rapid testing. We're at a critical point and how well these measures are implemented by all of us caring for ourselves and for one another will largely determine the outlook of the coming weeks and months ahead. The administration says it will ship 500 million at-home test kits beginning in January. The White House says Americans will be able to order the tests online. This is the biggest purchase uh, that we have done to date. It certainly represents a significant commitment and a recognition by the president that we need to be doing more. The Pentagon will also assign an additional 1,000 troops to help overwhelmed hospital staff. 
Some doctors argue the administration should have announced this earlier when the Omicron variant was first discovered in South Africa. We need billions of tests. We need them now, especially with a widely spreading variant that everyone could have predicted. The president's announcement comes as the virus has infected vaccinated lawmakers. Most say they're experiencing mild symptoms. In the nation's capital, the mayor is implementing vaccine requirements beginning next year for those looking to go to restaurants, nightclubs, and indoor gyms. We wanted to announce it today so businesses have as much time as possible to prepare. That new requirement will not apply to grocery stores, museums, or places of worship. In Washington, Rich Edson, Fox News. Well, in just a few minutes, we're going to dive deeper into the health care worker shortage going on right now in several states and how the government plans to make sure that doctors get the help they need. Well, right now, extended relief for those still paying for their education. Now, the Biden administration is keeping the pause on student loan payments going until May of next year. Now, the White House says the move gives people more time to catch up on their bills while allowing the administration to focus on other matters. Well, new tonight, Republican North Carolina Congressman Madison Cawthorn is headed for a divorce. A spokesperson for the representative of the state's 11th district says he and his wife, Christina, decided collectively that their marriage wasn't working. His job being much to blame in a statement, Christina said that she doesn't want to be married to someone changing the world. While well, Representative Cawthorn says he realized the balance just isn't attainable. All right, new at 10, a big request from a major airline. Why Delta is reaching out to federal officials to make major changes to COVID safety guidance. And we got a little warmer out there today, 61 degrees to be exact, at the airport in Charlotte. Wait till you see how much warmer it's going to get by Christmas next. And if you're looking to go to bed a little earlier tonight, tonight is not the night. Charlotte Sports Live at 11 o'clock is going to be ridiculous. We got Muggsy Bogues in studio, and we also have Trey Boston. Trey Bo live in the house tonight. We got a lot to talk about. Quick six, even Brian's going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. See you in about 45 minutes.
Well, welcome back. New tonight, a warning from the TSA about traveling without, or excuse me, with holiday gifts. The agency says that you might want to choose something simple to wrap them with that can be easily opened and then put back the way it was before. And that's because if those gifts trigger an alarm during security screenings, they'll have to be opened by the agents. And they recommend using gift boxes or bags instead of wrapping paper. Those gift bags are good, aren't they? Yeah. Very simple well, and easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, AAA predicts that airlines will have around 6.4 million passengers this holiday season. And tonight, Chief Transportation Correspondent Hawker Vanguard is at Charlotte Douglas International Airport with what more on uh, what we can expect if you're heading home for the holidays. This evening at Charlotte Douglas International Airport, hundreds of passengers still checking in for their destinations this Christmas holiday. Now, we do recommend that you arrive no less than two hours prior to departure for domestic flights and three hours for international. There's a lot of COVID testing and paperwork to be done for those overseas flights. Now, we spoke with a family earlier today who was taking on that journey to see family for the first time in three years. They say it's all worth it. It is busy. Um, we're going to London, England, and because of all the COVID um, protocols, even though we're all fully vaccinated and boosted, we had to have a COVID test yesterday. As soon as we get there, we have to go get another test and isolate for two days and, or until we get the negative test back there. And then to come back to America, we have to get another test. By our count, American Airlines handled almost 300 flights out of Charlotte Douglas today. Many of those in the evening hours right now. Not many delays or cancellations to talk about getting everybody where they need to go this Christmas holiday season. At Charlotte Douglas, I'm Hawker Vanguard. Back to you.